Flathead County Commissioners reject the plan for a new jail and sheriff's office. Glacier National Park thrilled with attendance numbers, even after a season affected by fire. And shocking new details emerge in a Bozeman avalanche that killed a skier over the weekend. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. The ongoing jail crisis in Flathead County continues as a plan to purchase land for a new jail in Columbia Falls was voted down this morning by Flathead County commissioners. MTN's Nicole Miller has the details. Flathead County's plan to purchase 24 acres of warehouser property in Columbia Falls has been nixed. County commissioners voted against the purchase. The county was eyeing the property as a solution to the ongoing jail crisis, but plans to build a 260-bed, 60,000-square-foot jail here will not move forward. Commissioner Phil Mitchell joined the meeting via telephone. He voted against the plan. We just one probably need more time and two we need to do more diligence and and just see where see where we end up right now we're, we don't see where this could work out for the moment the commissioners made the decision following a brief period of public comment where one person spoke out against the plan saying more time should be taken by the community to gather data for the case let's not be hasty in this decision because sheriff curry did a good job of selling us on the fact that he has an overcrowded jail. What we haven't decided together as the public is, is, is that just the symptom and what are the causes and effects? Others voiced concerns at community meetings last month about the safety of a jail near homes, nearby trains causing lack of sleep for inmates and higher taxes. Reporting in Columbia Falls, Nicole Miller, MTN News. And the county will continue to look for sites to build a new jail. To help cope with the issues short term, the county expanded the current jail by 40 beds. And for the first time ever, Glacier National Park's annual visitation tops 3 million people. And the park reaches the milestone even with the western side of the park shut down because of wildfires. The park was already well on pace to set a new record early in the summer. And for the first time in Glacier's history, more than 1 million people had come through the gates in July alone. That was a jump of more than 23%. Park visits continued strong in August, but then much of the west side of the park, including the popular going to the Sun Road, was closed after the Sprague fire began to rage in September. But even with the drop, visits through the east side entrances remain strong, and there are still two months to add to the whole total. Last year, the 2015 record was also broken by the end of September. The Whitefish School District has begun building a center for sustainability and entrepreneurship. The center will serve the community as a place to practice a more sustainable lifestyle. MTN's Jack Ginsburg went to the center today to see what it, was, what it will bring to the city of Whitefish and beyond. The Center for Sustainability and Entrepreneurship, or CSE, will be a state-of-the-art innovation education center that will provide applied learning exercises for K-12 students in energy, agriculture, forestry, natural resources, and entrepreneurship. Not only will the center provide resources for students, but adults in the community as well, showing them how to become more sustainable in everyday life. They can learn how to build a solar array on their home. They can attend a weekend workshop on permaculture. They can develop the skills, competencies, disposition to live a more sustainable life. And that's really what it's about. Delaloy explained to me why the building will be so unique and truly one of a kind. It will be the very first net zero building in the entire state of Montana. That means it won't have to rely on fossil fuels to supply energy and power the building. It relies on unique systems such as climate battery, geothermal, and solar arrays. With our attached greenhouse, students will be able to grow food year round. And that food will go back into the cafeterias of the middle school, the elementary school, and the high school. Delaloy wants the new center to serve as a model for the whitefish community and beyond to influence people to build more sustainably. This project is intended to become a vehicle for sustainable change in the whitefish community. And the center is already doing just that, as the school district has influenced the city council to evaluate how it can be more sustainable. What we see going on with the school district, I think is exemplary. And so the city is partnering with the school district uh, to do some of the same sorts of things, to look at our, our fleet, our building energy consumption, 
uh, how we manage our wastewater treatment plant, which is the biggest energy consumer in the city, uh, and how we conduct our city operations. Moving forward, the school district and the city of Whitefish seem to be moving towards more sustainable practices in everything they do. In Whitefish, Jack Ginsburg, MTN News. And after the center is completed, there will be native grass meadows, a compost area, an experimental forest, and outdoor classes added among many other features. And another nice day out there today, but we are looking to be in for a possible shift with some rain possible the next few days. And for more on that, let's take it over to Chief Miros Erin Yost for her first forecast. Erin? Yeah, definitely some precipitation in the immediate future, Northwest Montana. Today, though, we topped out, at least in Kalispell, 58 degrees. That is right where we should be for this time of year. Temperatures, though, will be in the 40s here over the next at least four, maybe five days as we sit behind a cold front, which is literally knocking on the door as we speak headed in from the west. Now that'll arrive by tomorrow morning, bringing with it our first round of scattered mountain snow and valley rain. But believe it or not, we could even see some valley snow here in the subsequent days as that colder air just settles on in. I've got all those details coming up in your forecast shortly. All right, thank you, Aaron. A shocking twist in the story of a couple who were caught in an avalanche while skiing over the weekend. The Gallatin County Sheriff's Office has identified the woman killed as 23-year-old Inga Perkins. She was skiing with her boyfriend, 27-year-old Hayden Kennedy, in the southern Madison Range. Kennedy was able to hike out of the mountains, but according to a statement released by his family, he later took his own life. MTN Morgan Davies has the story. It may seem early in the season for avalanches, but these two skiers were on in peak, which has already seen about a foot of snow. Kennedy was partially buried and Perkins was completely buried and died. We have a couple feet in the mountains and the wind has been blowing and it's kind of this tricky situation um, because its slopes are either scoured or they're wind loaded. And those wind loaded areas are the, the ones that hold the most snow and typically offer the best skiing. So you're kind of stuck with this uh, this dilemma. Kennedy was able to get out and search for Perkins but could not find her and eventually hiked out. On Monday, Gallatin County Search and Rescue recovered Perkins' body by using probes. The Gallatin National Forest Avalanche Center knows that since it's the beginning of the snow season, outdoorsmen may need some extra prep to get back in the habits of safe recreating. Practice with your, your transceiver and your rescue gear and, and be prepared for, for anything that can happen. You know, avalanches can happen at any time and early season is no exception. The Gallatin National Forest Avalanche Center says a full report of this incident should be available later this week. And it's more of a year until the election, but things are already percolating in the 2018 race for Montana's only U.S. House seat. MTN's Mike Dennison has the story. Montana's only congressman, Republican Greg Gianforte, took office just four months ago after a special election in May and is running for re-election next year. Potential Democratic opponents aren't wasting any time getting their campaigns up and running. This week, Billings attorney John Heenan reported raising $325,000 for his two-month-old campaign, including hundred grand of his own money. I'm not a politician. And so when you run for office, you don't know how it's going to go. It's like uh, having a party and you don't know if people are going to show up and, and people are showing up and it's really exciting. There's just been tremendous enthusiasm and so it's wonderful. And former Land Trust Director Grant Keir of Missoula says his campaign raised $192,000 in just under three weeks in September. I think um, people know that I'm in this race because I believe in Montanans ability to come together and solve problems and they're demonstrating that they believe in me and my message on that front. So I do believe that we can sustain this pace and that people are going to continue to support us. Heenan and Keir probably aren't the only Democrats hoping to take on Gianforte in 2018. State Representative Tom Woods of Bozeman has scheduled a campaign kickoff event this Thursday at the Baxter Hotel in downtown Bozeman. Heenan says he'll be putting plenty of miles on his vehicle as he travels the state to introduce himself to voters. I have a track record of standing up to powerful companies and powerful special interests and winning. And I intend to um, bring the same formula that I've used as a prosecutor and a, and a trial lawyer um, on behalf of the state of Montana and the people of Montana to represent them and only them and their best interests. And Keir says he thinks Democrats are fired up about the House race which they haven't won in more than 20 years. We feel like we have a good opportunity to win this seat, and I feel like we are excited about the candidates that we're bringing forward, and I'm proud to be in that group. 
Gian Forte will be filing his campaign finance report this weekend. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And Democrats will choose their nominee for the race in a preliminary election next June. In other state news, higher, election gets a, a higher education gets a financial boost with a new four-year initiative. The iGraduate Montana grant is worth $650,000 for the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation. The push is to see all high school students graduate and continue with their higher education learning, either in a two-year school or any four-year college, public or private. It'll be helping thousands. We will be working with students across the state in uh, the various school districts from A, B, C, and AA. And we all have a common goal. That's to help our students from high school to college and on to their next step in life in their career. This grant also makes the ACT test free for Montana students who are juniors in high school. And also starting November 6th, all Montana colleges and universities have agreed to waive the application fees for an entire week. And coming up after the break, bust out your raincoats and umbrellas. Aaron will be back with your forecast for the rest of the week. And later, people affected by the hurricane in Puerto Rico are now facing the effects of a bacterial disease from drinking unhealthy water. Coming up.